DJ Max Classify Edition was released in October 2008. It was essentially a partnership with Panavision and the Korean band Classify to make a DJ Max game featuring their music from their album, mini album, Metrotronics. Because this version of DJ Max features a famous band, they wanted their game to be more accessible. It has a slick, clean style, a bit of a departure from the other games. And just like the other DJ Max games, this game has its usual 4, 5, and 6 buttons, but introduced the all new 2 button mode. In 2 button mode, the only things you needed to worry about were the left and circle buttons, and occasionally the analog stick. Other than that, it was pretty much what it is. Two buttons and an analog stick. Not really much to say. Another new feature is 4 buttons FX, where you use 4 face buttons and the 2 shoulder buttons. It kind of plays like a revamped 6 button mode, and it's a lot of fun. There is also a new autocorrect mechanic. If you press the wrong button, it'll autocorrect for you with no real downsides. This, in my opinion, kind of defeats the purpose of a technical rhythm game. But in a game that's trying to cater to casuals, it kind of works, I guess. I wouldn't classify Classic Y as a bad DJ Max, it was certainly meant for a more casual audience. The song selection is great, the new songs are welcome additions, and if you're a fan of the band, there's even more incentive to buy this game. DJ Max Classic Y Edition is another fun DJ Max game, even if it is a bit on the easy side. And just like that, a few months later, DJ Max Black Square was released on December 2008. And unlike Classic Y's more casual direction, Black Square was meant to cater to the hardcore. Even the colors of the menus contrasted each other, giving them sort of a yin and yang. Classic Y was the good side, while Black Square was the bad. And I mean, 90s bad. One tiny new feature is the start note. It gets you ready for the song so it doesn't catch you off guard. It's a really small but simple mechanic that is a welcome addition. Black Square has the usual modes like 4, 5, and 6 buttons. But it also includes 4 buttons FX from Classic Y and 6 buttons FX, which is just 8 button mode. Both Black Square and Classic Y also had a club tour which is essentially mission mode. You go around to various clubs to become the number one ranked DJ in town. Each club has its own type. Music clubs let you choose single songs and help you unlock individual songs for arcade mode. Repertory clubs are song lists you challenge to unlock various things like characters, gears, notes, and effectors. And finally, mission clubs are where you challenge other DJs to increase your DJ rank. These are those objective type missions where you do something specific before their song list ends. One criticism I have is that these mission clubs can be seriously unforgiving. Having locked speed values or having ridiculous score requirements are just the beginning. These missions ask a bit too much from the player, making it hard to unlock various things. I know this is supposed to cater to the hardcore, but some of these missions are a bit too much. Another change from the other DJ Max games is that the characters, gears, and notes are just for show. They have done away with certain attributes like Def Up, Tech, and Fever. Instead, you unlock effectors in Club Tour like HP Up, Auto, and Auto Fevers. And Black Square introduced the new highest fever of 7, which is, in my opinion, too high for its own good. One of the cooler features is a difficulty called Redesign. These are few and far between, but it practically remixes a song. My favorite redesign song is I Want You and I'll just show you how different the versions are.
there's one more major criticism I have of this game, and that it still has the autocorrect mechanic from Classic Y. If this is supposed to cater to the hardcore, why is autocorrect still in this game? It still bothers me why they kept it in this version in the first place. Even with the odd decisions, Black Square still stands on its own as a solid DJ Max. Its difficulty is second to Portable 1, which is saying something. It's another DJ Max only meant for the hardcore. Exactly one day later, DJ Max Trilogy made its way on PC. I am actually not kidding. Black Square was released on December 24th, while Trilogy was released on the 25th. And this is hands down my favorite DJ Max. It has the most content out of any DJ Max, unsurprisingly. A ridiculous 130 songs are included, each having its own various note patterns for four, five, six, eight, and seven button modes. And this is not including the various difficulties as well. Mission Mode makes its return, and it's a much more beefier version of DJ Max Portable 2's Mission Mode. Stats and attributes make its return on character, gears, and notes, but a new shop mechanic was introduced. So instead of just unlocking them, you can earn in-game currency and points to buy and unlock these equips. Fever has actually changed drastically in this version of the game. Fever is now not timed, and it is easier to keep a fever because of that. While it may seem it takes away a certain risk from the game, the game's judgment is now different. Instead of judging from accuracy, it judges by score instead, and how well you can keep your fever. Also, unlike Black Square, the Max Fever returned to 5. DJ Max Trilogy is pretty much a love letter to all the DJ Max fans out there. A handful of songs from each DJ Max, including its own original tracks, are included. It kind of feels like a history of DJ Max all in one package. This game also had competitive online versus mode, but was taken down a while back, unfortunately. One major flaw of the game is not even gameplay related, it's more on trying to obtain a copy yourself. You can't really get the game normally anymore. Places like Amazon and eBay don't really have listings for the game, and if you do find any, they are ridiculously priced. The only way to play this game, unfortunately, is to pirate it. I don't condone pirating, but it's really the only way to play it right now. All we can hope is that Penavision releases the game on a digital platform like Steam, but I don't really see that happening anytime soon. DJ Max Trilogy is an amazing rhythm game, and Penavision really set the bar high for the next one in the series. DJ Max Portable 3 was released in 2010. This game doesn't get a cool intro because it sucks. Let's get the good out of the way first. The UI is pretty good, and you get to choose from two characters, each with their own abilities, like extra earned EXP. And the new songs are also pretty catchy, but that's about it. You only have two classic modes, which are 4 and 6 buttons. The rest are called 3.2, 4.2, and 6.2 tracks, which have the new gameplay mechanics. The gameplay or gimmick this game has is to switch tracks on the fly and remix the song. Use the analog stick to switch tracks depending on which sides the nodes fall on. Unfortunately, even putting in many hours into this game, it still felt unnatural. It never caught on and it felt detached from the rest of the mechanics. I always felt like I was missing whenever I switched tracks. Not only that, but it also makes the songs sound like shit. 
It throws in random noises and sounds from other songs, and it sometimes warps the song, making it sound even worse. Besides the gameplay itself, this game is a literal grind. Anytime you level, you have a chance to earn a useless picture, songs, or major gameplay unlocks like 6.2 tracks. But because it's random, 90% of the time, you unlock the useless picture, making that level you earned a complete waste of time. Once you hit around level 40 or so, the grind gets worse. Even when stacking EXP multipliers, the EXP you earn still feels minuscule. <sighs> All I can say about this game is to stay away from it and forget it ever existed. That was the DJ Max collection. Unfortunately, the original collection ended with a dud. But the rest of the games stand up on their own as fantastic rhythm games. While researching the series, I read up that Konami sued Penavision because their game was too much like Beatmania. They came to a compromise so that Konami would get paid if any new DJ Maxes with the same mechanics came out. Which is the reason why Technica was probably me. Technica isn't a bad game by any means, it's just that I prefer buttons over a touchscreen. Now do I think Super Beat Exonic will be the new wave of hardcore rhythm games? No, not really. But I do think it'll be a good game. Hardcore rhythm games are just something we don't usually get, and are few and far between. I just really appreciate it when these games come out outside of Asia. It's a niche genre, but it's something I'll continue to love for years to come. This is Leon from Humans Plays, and I hope I'll see you guys in the next video.